Hello everyone, how's it going? Let me know if you can if you can hear me and Steve say hello to everybody. Hello everybody. And if you can hear Steve, let us know. Um I'm still adjusting the audio levels. I know even for me the audio sounds kind of quiet, but it might be different for you guys. So um this episode is going to continue on kind of what we were doing with the last episode, which was last episode we covered some of the um lounges and spaces up on the promenade deck of Queen Mary and in this episode we're going to be covering mostly everything that surrounds the main hall of the Queen Mary so that's what we'll be doing um all right everybody says we they can hear us both that's good great let me open a this thing here just moving that into place when I need it okay so to show you guys on this diagram of the ship the main hall is up on promenade deck and where is it yeah so it'll be basically this area here just kind of surrounding the uh, first funnel and yeah that's what we'll be doing um, and for anybody that uh, wants to know we will I will be reading your guys's comments I may not answer all of them because we do have a lot to get through today and that's really what this episode this this show is about is talking about the Queen Mary but if I think that you have a comment that's that's really really good and it and it you know and you have a question or something that really pertains to the subject then I'll read it out and then we'll see if we can answer it um, all right Steve are you ready <laughs> well I just wanted to point out if you can zoom into that little area on that cutaway which is the, um, uh, oh, what is the artist's name? Boy, that I wasn't prepared to think of the artist's name. But this is the pencil. This is his uh, charcoal sketch um, before the watercolor uh, that he did of the cutaway. But this was done way before the maiden voyage of the ship. So if you really study how the interiors are laid out, it, it is in some ways not even close to how the ship was laid out. Uh, as built in 36. And in fact, if you see uh, section 48 shows like a spiral staircase for yeah. the main staircase, where <laughs> there was no spiral staircase, uh, you know, built on board like that. Very I interesting. Thought that was the children's playroom and the slide. Uh, well, oh well, you know what? I don't have the dis I don't have the description of of what we were looking at. But let's see, forty six would be the main lounge, right? Forty. Oh yeah, let's go look. Forty eight. Forty eight. Oh, children's oh, playroom. You're right. You're right. It is for okay. Well, we know that the slide in the children's playroom wasn't spiral either. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, let's see, in 46, I would, would assume would be the main hall area. Leading well, into I, the, I think in this cutaway, it's the drawing room. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it is the main lounge. Okay. Yeah, drawing room. All right. Well, forget everything I just said. Cause, <laughs> but in general, if you do look at a lot of how the, the interiors are laid out, there's quite a few changes that were made once the ship was actually in service. It's, it's laid out pretty much as... You know, as built in '36, but the way things are kind of shown weren't quite weren't quite right. Yeah, and um, and then I have sorry, just making that bigger. Um, this is the pre maiden voyage deck plans, the ones that that aren't always completely accurate as to how it was in 1936. But this is the closest I have for this. But this is kind of the area we'll be focusing on today. The main hall on promenade deck. Um, there's the the. I guess you could call it a grand staircase. It's the mm -hmm. the midship staircase. Um, and yeah, so there's all these shops here. We got the drawing room, children's playroom. We got lecture room, library, two corner shops. Uh, somewhere in here is the music studio, and then uh, I think we got like a lecture room somewhere. I think I already said that, but yeah, there's, yeah. All right, so shall we start with just what the main hall looked like in general? 
Oh, well, actually, I was going to start forward and work back. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right with you. Do you want to do observation bar? We'll do, we'll do observation bar, yeah. Okay. Let me... Uh, I have here... Ooh, is that... I hope this is a pre-war picture. I'm pretty sure it, I can get it. Well, it would be kind of... It, it, you know, th that'll work. <laughs> that wasn't very... <laughs> There wasn't very much change to the observation bar, even even post war. It, it oh, pretty okay. much remained about the same. Um, but you know, uh, the observation bar. If for those who have never been on board the Queen Mary before, it is at the forwardmost end of promenade deck, and it is it is in a half circle. It uh, originally uh, had an inner band of windows that looked out onto the enclosed promenade, and then the enclosed promenade outer uh, hull actually had similar sized windows that looked out onto the bow and, and towards the forward part of the ship. Um, and it's, uh, it's built to the camber and to the shear of the deck, which as you start to walk inside, you do feel the room starting to, to go up higher as you start to walk more forward. But, uh, and that would give you a lousy view if you were to, uh, uh, to continue that way with the room. So, they built a more flattened uh, upper uh, raised deck area. And then that actually gives you a little bit more of a, a clearer view out onto the bow. Unfortunately, this room was probably one of the first public rooms to be closed in the event of, of fairly rough weather. If you had, uh, if you had uh, waves that were breaking past the well deck uh, and hitting against the, uh, the outer promenade windows, they would close the outer promenade, uh, enclosed promenade, and they would close uh, the observation bar. I've heard it was closed on numerous occasions on voyages. Um, I, I have never heard of any damage that was done. Uh, I don't think that any waves have penetrated, um, but it, it's always a good possibility. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, uh, let's see where we could go with on this. Uh, let's talk about the balustrades. Um, the balustrades are, uh, they are cast aluminum that are hand carved. They are uh, they're uh, carved by uh, A. Compton Roberts. And they uh, are on both sides of the room and in the center part of the room. And they... Uh, border the raised platform on the forward end of the room. Uh, the... All right, folks, we're about to Sorry. enter the observation. Whoa! <laughs> I was like, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> this darn thing always plays in, in sound, but I'm going to show you guys what Steve's talking about. Next. Oh, you've got... Oh, wonderful. Let's see here. This, trying to fit it to the right size here. All right, so this is it today, but I do have like a up close of the the balustrades, kinda. Yeah, it's and it's interesting if I remember correctly. The the, the theme is like drinking and fishing. <laughs> you yeah. have what looked like I guess uh, wooden beer kegs, and then um, I know there's like fish and 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 all that in the design. An interesting combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now I believe that the the aluminum actually goes to the the, the last beer cake that's at the base of the uh, uh, of that lighting urn that you're about to get to there, and the the lighting urn is actually um, it is uh, spun brass. Uh, uh, any kind of spun metal is done where it's turned in a lathe, but it's actually heated up with a torch as it's being cut. Um, it's uh, spun brass and then was originally coated in what what the British called German silver. It's basically nickel silver. Um, it, when you look at those lining urns today, you see what look like brass uh, bands at the bottom and going up through the, the red urn. And that is because those areas have been polished so many times that all of the nickel silver has been polished away. So you're now seeing the brass of oh. the, the actual fitting. 
And you'll find that in a lot of areas on the ship now. Uh, anything that, that was nickel silver plated um, either is showing its bronze core or its brass core. And unfortunately, you know, they at some point they'll need to be taken off and replated. But yeah, you can see the brass, absolute. Yep. And then uh, I have a photograph here. I think it's I think it's an accurate color photograph, but I don't know for certain. Oh yeah, that's probably that's probably post war. But uh, like I said, the observation bar didn't really change much at all mm -hmm. um yeah go ahead and leave it there for a minute uh okay. the uh the two big columns are actually stainless steel i just was learning that uh they are stainless steel and threaded uh to the uh, decking on the top and on the bottom oh yeah uh it <laughs> i saw that the the definition was nickel chromium stainless steel, but that absolutely makes no sense to me. Um, why you would even nickel chrome stainless in the first place? So <laughs> I, I have a feeling that was probably an error. Yeah, that's. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. Um, the uh, the half circle there in front of the painting above the bar is actually gold leaf. Uh, it isn't today, <laughs> but it, yeah. it was it was originally gold leaf, and there is recessed lighting in there that would help uh, reflect and show that that painting. The painting is Royal Jubilee Week, 1935, and it depicts the 25th anniversary of the ruling king, King George V. And uh, King George V. I don't know if you can zoom any more into that or not. I guess I might have a photograph of that directly. Oh, that would even be better. Yeah. I'm just pulling that up right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, where, where is it? Virtual tour. Oh, God. There's the folder. Now, where's the file? Ah, here we go. Ah, Oops. wonderful. So let's zoom over to the left. And so you see the man in the red coat is King George V. Oh, him? Yeah. Oh, nice. And if you scroll over to the right, see the man in the white hat there dancing between the women? Him? Yeah, that's... that's uh, that's Alfred Thompson. That is the artist of the painting. He oh. kind of put himself into the picture. Scroll over to the right a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I had the wrong white hat. <laughs> He's next to the fat lady. I should have known that. <laughs> He's next to the uh, rather large pink-dressed lady on the right. Rather large. Oh. Yeah. So There's the white hat. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's Alfred, uh, Alfred Thompson. You're right. Okay. Uh, but it's been so long since I've seen this painting in person, I had forgotten where he was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, unfortunately, today, the uh, the painting is not very well lit, and that's because the uh, the recessed lighting in that area above the, uh, above the bar is not in use. Now, now, this painting doesn't really show much of the lighting uh, ability in there, but I wish there was another picture. I know there's some other pictures that do show it. Um, now, Long Beach has added um, uh, ceiling cone lighting in the, uh, the red band, the half circle band today, and that's to help light the, the bar. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Yeah, I can't zoom in on that, but... Yeah, but that's definitely showing the, the lighting. Yeah, and you can see how it reflects off of that ceiling. Off the gold, off the gold loop, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if... I'll, I'll kind of scroll through this and see <laughs> if there's any other useful... Uh... Oh, yeah, well, there's, there's kind of... You can kind of see it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the building uh, building photos. Yep. Now, the interesting thing that I like about the uh, the bar is the uh, the port and starboard lights that are on either side of the, the center access door. You'll see one one's in red for port and the other one's green oh. for starboard. Yeah, there we go. There's the green one. There's the red one. Are they still yeah. there today? They are still there today. Um, the and and the glass paneling this in the back there. Um, now today, unfortunately, is now all covered up with shelves for all the bar stock, all the different the alcohol that they have. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, let's see. Can you zoom in? Oh, you can't zoom in on that, can you? No, it's a video. Um, but uh, they were recently relit. I think after the you know, so-called restoration in 2007, um, I believe that they were relit, the, the uh, port and starboard uh, lamps. Yeah. And I think that same, that same restoration, the door came back. Yeah, the door came back. It... <laughs> There was shelving put there, and the but that door is not accessible anymore. Uh, on the other side of that door would have been like a little hallway that led to another door that leads out into the forward first class staircase. And today it's being used for um, beer cakes for for all the taps, the beer taps. Yeah. So uh, the only way that the bartenders can get into the bar is by physically hopping over the bar. That is the only way they have access today. Originally, there were two ways to get into the bar. One was through those doors. And the other one was uh, the bar top, the countertop lifted up, and there's an access door right there. Uh, you can see the access door still. Um, oh, which is You did have to. You did have to step up over the the threshold, but uh, uh, but you did the the bar top lifted up and you could walk through there. But see that bar that that bartender is actually in the process of doing the hop, mm -hmm. and that became unusable when Disney placed the uh, the black quartz countertop over the original countertop. Jeez. Unbelievable. The did you did you tell everybody the the type of wood that is under that counter, or did I miss that? So that's Macassar ebony. It's a it's a pretty. I actually believe it's it's an extinct wood today. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one of the. There are supposedly six woods on board that that have become extinct um, since the building of the Queen Mary, and this I believe is one of them. I'm going to have to check back and. And yeah. verify that, but yeah, and, Macassar, Macassar ebony. And in person, it's and, real beautiful. Oh yeah, it's one of my favorite woods on the ship. And all of the uh, all of the furniture on board in the in the original observation bar um, uh, uh, furnishings, uh, the chairs were were done in that same ebony. And I think the the back sides of the sofa seats were done in that same ebony. Yeah, it's a beautiful wood. And then the, the rest of the rest of the room is uh, uh, maple burr. Um, the the bands and the uh, and the dados are what's called cedarma, cedarma or cedarma. I don't know exactly if you if you put a heavy emphasis on the middle, but it's actually what you would think it is. It's a, it's a hybrid of cedar and mahogany. So all the bases there, like below, like the the uh, the kegs in the balustrade, that's all that that cinema. Uh, I'm trying. To, I think I have a a picture here. Eh. Shoot, I don't think so, but maybe I have it in the the video. Uh... No, I guess while you're while you're in that position right there, we should point out that. Uh, that one of the major changes that Long Beach did to the observation bar during the conversion in 6871 uh, 
was that the inner uh, inner bulkhead of the outer enclosed promenade was cut out, and there's a picture of it being done. Uh, be, uh, having done now, actually, I take it back. This might have actually been done once the ship came to Pier J. I, I, I'm going to have to verify that. But mm -hmm. I, most of the major kind of work like this was done at Pier E before the ship came was, I uh, was think towed over. That Petula Clark special showed that uh, that this bulkhead was still here. Yes. Yeah, because that Petula Clark special was filmed in March of '68, I believe, and so the ship was wasn't touched at all at that at that time. So everywhere where she went, uh, it was you know uh, dark and and empty, but but not modified. But uh, an interesting fact is that there's some rumor that uh, that Kennard had actually planned on making this kind of modification to the observation bar. Um, I've never seen any drawings of it, but it, it it's plausible. It is plausible. Um, uh, the other interesting thing is that this room, as popular as it was, um, and probably very likable with the first class uh, set of passengers, uh, they lost it. Well, I guess you could technically have gone into it, but it went over to third class in 1963. In fact, the whole forward uh, first-class staircase with the observation bar and then all of the accommodations that led off of that first-class staircase in that forward area, forward of the staircase, um, actually became third-class cabins. So that staircase right there, those two lifts, and uh, and then if you went down to, to main deck, uh, you had... Uh, See, when you go to main deck, there's the doors that go into what was the third class garden lounge today, but that those doors weren't <laughs> weren't really the entrance to the third class garden lounge. The third class garden lounge was was uh, from the forward end of the room. Oh, wow! I didn't know that. But so let me just let me get that right again. You were saying that um, that. The, the this forward area observation bar with the staircase this became part of third class it all became third class oh wow i that is something i did not know yeah uh, and, and it was mainly because um at the same time in 63 uh first class got their new bar the the midships bar which we had talked about when discussing the uh, the long gallery um, that, I mean, personally, I would have preferred the, the observation bar over the long, the, the midships bar, but I guess it was, it was thought that, that the first class passengers had enough bar lounge space, uh, that they could afford to, uh, give up the observation bar to attract, um, the third class was actually having a little bit of a boom in the mid to late sixties, um, Especially with like uh, traveling uh, students who wanted to go abroad, um, it became it became more the way that uh, you know your typical maybe even lower middle class uh, families could travel uh, if they wanted to go to Europe. It was probably uh, it was comparable to airline, if not maybe a little bit cheaper than airline because airline travel was not cheap at the time. Um, I want to show people something. I, sorry, the whole time we've been talking about Observation Bar, I've been trying to find this photograph, but I finally found it. Um, this is the, uh, well, first of all, this is Walt Disney, but uh, this is the, the, yeah, who? <laughs> uh, this is the promenade that used to pass in front of the Observation Bar. And something kind of cool is we were talking about how Long Beach kind of removed uh they kind of removed that well i happen to be standing in that same spot walt would have been standing right here but like right where that table is yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> so just wanted to show that to people real quick yeah 
And yeah, and you know, I'm sure that people are probably wondering, well, where are where are the original tables and chairs? Where are the sofa seats? Where's all the original furnishings of the room? There are a few laying around in storage. Um, I believe there is. There are a couple of the original observation bar sofas. Um, there are quite a few observation bar tables. Um, every time I've run across an observation bar chair in the most recent time that I had been on board, uh, the chairs were in pretty bad shape. Um, they needed uh, they needed wood surgery. Uh, the arm uh, arm pieces were actually coming apart, um, and that might be just due to age. Um, I have not seen. Um, you see, it there were there were two kinds. There were ones that had like an open aired armrest, and then there were some that were actually like yeah, perfect. That's exactly perfect right there. That had the um, yeah, that had the enclosed uh, padded and, and upholstered armrest. Um, I do not know, uh, if there are any of the, uh, of the, uh, padded, uh, enclosed ones. I don't think I've ever seen one. Hmm. And, and it's, you know, this all was, you know, you know, it all went to, you know, their mass sales, you know, in the late, going into the late sixties and early seventies. Yeah, I have um, another picture of the observation bar area. Um, ooh, ooh, that's <laughs> horrible! That's <laughs> absolutely horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is it in Long Beach, guys. So uh, I, I guess they thought, you know, let's let's put these lanterns to use. <laughs> oh. oh, god! And uh, yeah, they they had a. I don't understand why, but in the Long Beach era, they had they had a problem with these lighting urns. And now they're solid metal, so the red area that you see there is not uh, going to glow. So the only light that you get out of the lighting urns it actually is just shining directly up and onto the ceiling. So it's you're kind of getting the reflection of the light from the ceiling cast back down. But the majority of the light in the room is given by the the round, what like you know the eyeball, uh, ceiling fixtures which which had a center, uh, uh, focused light and then and then had recessed lighting inside the, the yeah there you go right there. Now that's obviously not all fully turned on. There is a light in the center that shines down and there's should be I think those are now on dimmer switches so, um, it can be dimmed. But see, the lighting urn, you know, it just casts the light up, and and then all of the Long Beach era, they had, it's like they had an issue with them, and so if you can see from that picture that you just had, they turned them into a, a flower pot. <laughs> they weren't even using them as light fixtures; <laughs> just put flowers in them. And then uh, later, I think during the Rather era, uh, they had created these, oh. Like a plastic, uh, multi-tiered dome um, top that fit on top, so that when the light was on, that it actually shined up onto that plastic dome globe, and then the globe, you know, cast some light out into the room. Um, that also looks pretty stupid. <laughs> and another, then I guess I have another Long Beach era photo here. Okay. Oh yeah. So let's talk about the color change and the light fixture change. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what's her? Oh, gosh, here we go. Brain, brain, completely uh, not working again. Um, Alex, you gotta help me. Uh, the, Rather's wife. Oh, oh, uh, Bonita. Bonita Granville Rather. Bonita yeah. Granville Rather. Uh, she was all about colors and and mo and moods of color she absolutely hated red despised the color red she thought it was it was a very negative almost evil like color scheme 
and she finally got her way, and uh, the color scheme of the room was changed. All of the red was painted either to a buff color or to uh, that light, uh, oh, kind of a greenish teal. Now, I um, must add, uh, for people who are like, oh, she has terrible taste. Well, actually, when, when it came to brand new buildings, because she, she and her husband were the owners of the Disneyland Hotel for like, you know, right. like almost 30 or 40 years. She would help design the interiors of those, and they looked beautiful all the time. But her going into Queen Mary and trying to change things up is what didn't look good. So. Right. Yeah. I, you know, when, you, when you're trying to maintain a historical aspect, um, you know, you don't talk about completely changing the, the color scheme of the room because it, it has a completely different appearance going from that to that. And, it, and she went as far as to have the original – eyeball uh, recessed ceiling fixtures removed and replaced with a modern fixture. Yeah. And and it was only uh, 2007 when those eyeball fixtures came back into the room. And for all the time from, from the Rather era to, 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 to 2007, those eyeball uh, recess fixtures sat dusty and dirty in forward storage for all that time. All everybody was always hoping that they would return to the observation bar, and it you know it took quite a bit of time, but it it did finally make it there. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to touch base just really quick on the wartime use of the room. Uh, I've heard two things. One. In its earlier days, it was a medical dispensary uh, when she was doing her first trooping duties. When uh, when space was becoming more and more necessary, when you started getting into the 16,000 troop range, uh, then this actually became full of bunks. And I know there are photographs of it. Um, I didn't have one handy to, to give to you, but I would think that to see this room just full of bunks would be a, a you know a spectacular sight uh, to see. Um, the, the same one, with, the same way with the swimming pool. I don't know if you've seen many pictures of the swimming pool loaded up with bunks, but yeah, I have that somewhere. Let's see. Uh, I have to go to our deck. Oh, different file. Oh yeah, and that's yeah, and that's above the uh, the pool. I've seen pictures of the of the bunks going down into the pool. It's, that's even more weird. Yeah, this... as you can see the uh, the tile work of of the pool tank, you know, along the uh, along the uh, the, the uh, folding cot uh, frames. Yeah, this you know, folks, like... this diagonal thing is the slide of the swimming pool. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that that opening that you're actually looking through. Is the diving board? Uh, you know what was the diving board? Uh, on that, this would now be the uh, uh, the port side. Mm -hmm. so. so you're yeah you're looking forward you're looking forward and, and to the starboard uh, through the port side diving board. Oh, here's another photo. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right in front of the staircase. Yeah, so there's the there's the slide, and then uh, there's a there's a uh, some kind of motif of like a crane, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what was originally there until the ship came to Long Beach, uh, and and I don't want to go too much more into this, but you can you can see the overhead deck um, that was added because the balcony section of the swimming pool was converted to an overflow dining room hall for the uh, uh, for everybody to uh, for mess. Oh, okay. All right. So let's see. Is there anything else really to discuss on? Um, oh, well, an interesting note, too, is that uh, anybody who is a Star Trek fan, um, 
the Enterprise D uh, in the Star Trek Next Generation series, the Room 10 Forward on on the Enterprise was designed with the with the thought of the observation bar from the Green Knight. Oh, nice. So much stuff I didn't even know. <laughs> it's like everyone here is like, "Wow!" I'm even even Alex is learning stuff. I'm like, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're gonna run into Guinan uh, at the bar. <laughs> she was that was Whoopi Whoopi Goldberg that played her in in the series. And mm-hmm. She was the one who tended bar and tend forward. But um, but yeah, it's it's interesting how they uh, you can see how walking into the observation bar and seeing how ten forward was laid out on the Enterprise. It's definitely Definitely had some inspiration on that. All right. So let's see. Um, exactly. And series. by the way, that, that early shot that you had there with the with the lighting urns turning into to, to, uh, flower pots, that would definitely be early 70s, like maybe 72, 73, 74, somewhere around that time period. Yeah. And look at the, the pub chairs. Oh, gosh, yes. Absolutely. With atrocious. the... With the Victorian lamps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, just, just absolutely horrid. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. What? Zoom in. Zoom in. What? What, what happened? Third class dining room chairs. Oh, those are. Yep. Are they? Third, yep. I thought Third they had the room. open in the back. Those should be. Those are third class dining room chairs. No, no, no. Um, let's see. Let's go back. Um. Oh golly, well, I need to go look at something really quick. I can't. Uh. Bingo. Third class. Here we go. We got a picture of one. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your phone. Hold your phone. Yeah, you're correct. You're correct. One second. I believe they're oh, second okay. class dining room chairs. Yeah, they're second class dining room chairs. <laughs> mm. Do you have a second class dining room shot? I, I, I do. And I am really surprised that it's not in this file. And you know what I'm thinking? Uh, on a previous live stream, I accidentally moved them to a folder on a oh, previous no. live stream. Because uh, I like I to throw- I like to drag and drop, but I forget that sometimes it doesn't it doesn't copy. Instead, it just moves when I drag and drop. I can throw it to you on Discord really quick if you want to do that. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay, let me see here. Uh, can I drag that there? Open that. There we go. I, I, I will be the first one to admit that when it comes to remembering every little piece of furniture from every little piece of each class, um, I am totally... Uh, brain scattered sometimes i think second class is third class third class is first class uh it's so easy plus it's probably i'm i'm almost 50 now so my my memory is not what it used to be (laughs) (laughs) so i will be the first one to admit that that sometimes i forget uh the details of where things might have originally come from i just have to be reminded and i just got the reminder (laughs) that's okay (laughs) Yeah, at least I knew they were dining room chairs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's interesting that, you know, in the 70s and in, in even in through the 80s, that you found a lot more original furniture being used for the general public to to uh, utilize in public rooms and even in the hotel rooms. Um, and as time went on, uh, those pieces slowly disappeared. And that's mainly because they were abused. They started to fall apart. Um, and that is, that's why the pieces that do remain today are in the, in the horrible shape of they're in now. Yeah. 
Well, we do have to move on from the observation yes, bar. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, so, so what, what should we do next? Well, let's go ahead and, and cover the, the music studio. And that, that'll okay. be pretty good. Okay, so that's the music studio there, folks. And let me open up a... I think I have, like, one, one picture. Yeah. picture. Yeah, there aren't really very many pictures of that. Yeah, that'll work. So it's showing the grand piano there. And what's interesting, though, is that I think there is an area rug that's actually been added. Um, the room originally boasted an inlaid uh, uh, wood flooring uh, that had decorative uh, music clefts and, and notes in the uh, in the flooring. But that's obviously not clefts and notes. That looks like a uh, that looks like a Wilton carpet. Mm -hmm. um, but the room was—it's a small room. It's only like, uh, oh golly, it's it's maybe like fourteen feet by fourteen feet. Well, let's see that area. Yeah, I think it's fourteen by fourteen. Yeah, I think yeah. you might be right. Just about. It's, it's pretty close to that, and it, it, a very simple room, but it did have. Uh, uh, in this case, you can see that it's all being uh, enclosed off by by curtains, and that was for privacy. And it was so, so that anybody that was on board, any kind of musician that uh, uh, played piano or played any kind of instrument, if wanted to have some kind of a rehearsal, you know, keep keep brushed up on any kind of music uh, per playing, um, the, the, do it in there. The portside promenade went right by it. So you could like technically look in, right? Yeah, you're you're right. Uh, now the uh, now today there are windows that have been cut in uh, from the inside corridor, which didn't originally exist, and that door that leads to the outside didn't originally exist. That's uh, mm. uh, that was added in the Long Beach era, um, and it's hard to. Oh, it's not tea time now. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of is tea. Uh, that that backlit uh, glass panel there also is is decored with uh, uh, musical note etchings and all that. Uh, and the uh, um, let's see. I know I can't. I don't think you can see it. No, you can't see it from this. I, I couldn't uh, even find any other modern pictures of this room, ironically. Yeah, uh, and I'll tell you right now, the upright piano, not original. Mm -hmm. The the two uh, chairs, um, uh, the small chairs, are not original. The center round table is not original. It's not? The, no, it's not. Oh. oh, okay. That would have fooled me. Um. And but the the rectangle table with the tea set that's that's original. That looks I like a main part. lounge table. I believe it is a main lounge table, and the sofa is one of two original uh, main hall sofas that are on board. Oh. This one was was reupholstered uh, back in the late nineties, and and the other one is on board, but it's in pretty rough shape. It needs to actually have some. Uh, wood reconstruction done to its framing uh you can see in this picture some people sitting on that sofa right i think i it believe they were upholstery yeah well they were they were leather upholstered but i mm. believe that the original upholstery was more had more of a, a textured yeah uh, uh feel to it like a pen and the uh uh and the one that's on there today in that shot. See, they, uh, Ron Smith, who was the uh, uh, curator historian that was on board uh, during the, oh, it would be uh, mid 90s up to early 2000s, uh, he, uh, he wanted to get the main hall uh, decor with original furniture after the uh, original, the, uh, the rubber inlaid flooring had been replaced in 98. Mm -hmm. And so he went down into forward storage and he found the, the two sofas. But I, we, I do not believe that there are any of those small seats that you see there in that black and white photo on board. So he took those two seats that are 
I think actually I think that there were a total of four that he took, and those were actually seats that were um, that were their Long Beach era seats uh, that were purchased, and and since they somewhat mimicked the original seats, he went with those and had them decorated in the uh, the same two tone color um, upholstery that the uh, that the sofa was done in. And they stayed out in Main Hall for quite a while, um, but the seats were really starting to get abused by people. Um, uh, people sat in them with, you know, with their with a, an ink pen and like, you know, jabbed the ink pen into the into the uh, the, the faux leather, uh, you know, the vinyl uh, upholstery, and and uh, it got ripped. You know, and, and it's been patched, so when you when you see it, you can kind of see that there are areas that it got patched up with. Yeah. Um, and then it was finally decided to to take them out and uh, put some modern, really modern furniture in there. And uh, and somehow they ended up in this in here. This looks nothing like what the music room looked like originally. Um. Yeah, I really don't know why. I, and, and as far as I know, I do the. the music room was purely for um it wasn't even for like holding like a performance for people to watch it was strictly for the ability of musicians to you know to practice or to just have a little i guess you could say a jam session but it was it was not for entertaining and and that only had what uh three years of use as a as a music room and then uh, during the war, it actually became uh, what would become like a series of offices. Any any senior officers uh, of either the uh, of, of any of the branches and of any of the uh, country of branches. So you know you could talk, talk about uh, uh, you know the, the British Army. You know, we'd have the American Army, uh, Navy, um, any any. Any personnel that were on board, even Marine Corps, you, you, any senior officers had working offices, and they were all basically stationed onto the various rooms there in the forward part of prom deck. So the music studio became became an office. Um, after the war, it became the children's playroom, and we're going to go into the children's playroom uh, next, but. Uh, the children's playroom was was originally a much larger room, and some of the decor from the original children's playroom was transplanted over to the port side, uh, and the music room became the children's playroom all the way in, until the end of the ship's career when it came to Long Beach in '67. Alrighty, so shall we talk about the children's playroom next? So we can talk about the children's playroom. So the children's playroom in those first three years, from thirty six to thirty nine, was, uh, I mean, even considered today, I would think is would be a any small child's paradise. Um, you had a a small, uh, fully automated uh, cartoon movie theater. You had a small little uh, secluded cot room, so if a child wanted to take a nap, he could take a nap. Um, you had a little area that they would serve tea and, and uh, cookies and stuff uh, to children. Uh, the room had a boys' end, which if you see here, well, yeah. where, where, where? where? Oh, okay. So, so the boys' end would be on the end with the slide. So we can see the slide to the right. Um, there was a hidden cave underneath the slide. There's the entrance to the cave. Um, the entrance to the slide would be behind the cameraman, uh, and there was a staircase that led up to the top, and then, yeah, from that side. And that would be the boys', boys end of the room right there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, this, I'm trying to think. The staircase uh, is here oh, somewhere. Yeah, so there's the sentry hut. You had a sentry box, uh, which you can see that's striped. This oh, and then, oh, and then there's the... the a Wild West log cabin right next to it. Oh, I see. Uh, and you and you can see that there were a series of caves. So I think I think they all interconnected. Yeah. I mean, this is I I I, I could spend hours, and I'm 50 years old. I could spend hours <laughs> having some fun in this room. 
<laughs> um, let's see what else. So the so just like you had the boys' room, the central area was mainly for just general play. Okay. Um, but the other side was the girls' room, which had a dollhouse. Um, and I believe that's also the end that had yeah the, uh, the little kitchen area that might have even been for uh, girls to play house. You know, play. You know, they are serving food and stuff in there. But they did serve. Uh, refreshments to the children in there. Um, well, and I did not know there was a piano, but it looks like there was a piano there on the left. Yeah. Oh, it's very sure beautiful enough. piano too. It is. It is. You can see the. That's not even. Wow, I don't even have that listed as a uh, as a feature of the room, but. Uh, that yeah, looks like the quilted maple, like you see in second class. It does. It does. I would. I would agree with that. Um. Now, you know, this is one of the color photos that was taken during the, uh, just prior to the maiden voyage in 36. And, and I was just telling Alex before we came on, uh, you know, a lot of areas on the ship, and I'm sure especially, oh, yeah, yeah, stay right there for a minute. Um, a lot of areas on the ship, uh, had a lot of, you know, spectacular features, um, that, you know, that were meant to wow passengers, um. And I would assume that a lot of, in a lot of cases that they became a maintenance nightmare and they disappeared. Probably some took a while to disappear while others probably disappeared within maybe the first year of service. Um, so whenever you see things that are listed as, as features of a room, it's not always the case that it was there, you know, even say in a few years, let alone by 67. And in this case, this entire room was transplanted. This room was, what, 40 feet long and 40 feet long and 34 feet deep. Yeah. Is that right? Thir- feet long? Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, 18 feet. So 18 feet wide and, and, and 40 feet long. And you went <coughs> – excuse me. You went all the way down to a to an eighteen by fourteen room. The music room, the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, they definitely a much smaller room. Definitely downsized for that. Yeah. Um. This, folks, is my favorite feature of the room. This, uh, this, what do you call it? A lamp, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> the, the ceiling fixture. The yeah. ceiling fixture. It's the uh, so starburst beautiful. sun. Yeah. And and uh, unfortunately, only the the sun's face and one of the glass panels of the star of the sunburst that comes out from the the sun's face uh, exists, as far as I know, on board. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, the uh, the outer area is actually lit blue and had uh, twinkling stars in them. Now, I've never seen a picture of this, but this is according to what the, the shipbuilder des- uh, description is. And, and then there was also a moon. Uh, I believe it's actually in the far... If you were to tilt upward, it would be like the far right corner. So, the, you know, towards the back, probably right above the... It would have been towards... I don't have a picture of it, but yeah, yeah. it would have been towards the back where the boys area was, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to actually, like, change the lighting. So if, like, if it was nap time, they may have actually, you know, dimmed the sun and the blue lights came on. And so, you know, like the kids... Because I could totally, you know... I remember how, what it was like to be a kid. It, you know, you, you had to have nap time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I can see that being the case. And and the, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that the ship was was rigged with mood lighting in in all a lot of the public rooms, uh, going between you know, uh, you know, bright, you know, red and white colors to blues and greens and and. Uh, you know, to, to to change the mood of the room, especially the veranda grill. The veranda grill had a very sophisticated uh, uh, lighting system that was controlled by the 
MC's microphone, so when the band was playing music, he could change the lighting from the push buttons on his microphone just by what the band was playing. Yeah. But we'll get into the veranda grill at another point. (laughs) I was going to tell people the first children to play in this room and to slide down this slide was uh, was Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. And that's that's Princess Elizabeth, as in Queen Elizabeth II, the current monarch of Britain. Uh, When she and her sister slid down the slide, Cunard decided to call it the royal slide afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. All right, now let's get to. Let me see here. I gotta del- to close off some of these these pictures. Uh, oh, there's that piano. <laughs> yeah, and that's that that picture. Uh, I would say is probably just. Well, it looks it looks it looks like it, it could be taken. Just before, 30, you know, before the last peacetime voyage in '39. Yeah, that is definitely in the original, uh, in the original starboard side playroom. Mm-hmm. I I honestly have not seen a photograph of what the children's playroom looked like when it was transplanted. The uh, the descriptions show uh, that a lot of the decor from the first class children's playroom was transplanted over to the the music but uh but i've never seen a photograph of it so i couldn't tell you how to how much i can tell you this the slide was not included in the transfer oh yeah that's true yeah that's true wouldn't have been enough room um some some people were talking about the ocean liner toy that the queen mary toy i'm trying to find it yeah there's one right there and uh some people are wondering what it's made of i think it was wood wasn't it I believe it's wood, and I believe it also has uh, it has wheels on the bottom of it, and it's got a you little could, uh, a little toe. Yeah, a little rope. So you, you could drag it on it. the. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, one and of, I, one I, of them is still in that in the that that display of the room today, isn't it? Yeah, I believe I believe we have a couple of examples of it on board. I don't know to what you know if they were originally on the ship and and have remained on board, or if, if somebody has brought them or made them. Let me see if I can um, find that. And there's one of the uh, the cutie dolls that they would sell on board. Children's playroom. There might be a photo online of the playroom that exists as it exists today, and you'll see some of those toys are still on display there. Uh, oh, if I click on that, that it's kind of oh yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, here, so folks, um. To quickly kind of summarize, because we are running on time and we still have a few more rooms to talk about, but basically, uh, sometime, how, how long ago would you say did they turn the the original first class children's playroom uh, back into a display of a playroom? The original, you're talking about the pre-war. The, yeah, so the, the one on the starboard side. That was a coffee shop for a long time. It was right. a few other things. And then in Long Beach, because today it's a display now as a children's playroom, but it's not doesn't look anything like it used to. Right. Uh, you know, it, it was a it was a store um, for the longest time. And I'm, t- I'm trying to remember what kind of store was in there. Um, And then it was closed for the longest time. Um, oh, that's interesting because they uh, they have uh, what remains of the wood paneling from the third class children's playroom on display in there. Yeah, the I, yeah. I heard they had a few things from the three different playrooms in here. Like that elephant that, is seen. Uh, that elephant seat is that right there. Yep. Yep. I know. Yep. So, um, yeah, they kept a few, a few things and then half the stuff is not even original, but one of those panels is, uh, is a depiction of Sinbad the sailor, which, which actually to me would be, it was a rather frightening image. (laughs) It's it's not really for children, but whatever, I guess. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we should move on to another room now. Come on. Well, let's let's cover the uh, let's cover the lecture room, which will be really really quick. Okay. Let me. Uh, so okay. So this is lecture room. It was just behind the music studio, and then let me go to my picture of the lecture room. All right. All right. There we go. So uh, rather plain room. Uh, painted walls. Um, it did have a, a recess lining in the ceiling. Uh, it uh, had a small little stage and podium uh, for. Uh, I would assume that when you had uh, passengers that were uh, of some notoriety, if they wanted to give some kind of a, a speech on board, um, I'm sure that also Cunard probably prearranged for. Uh, I've been told that uh, that Winston Churchill actually spoke in here to passengers when he was sailing after the war. Um, uh, I would also bet you that you had celebrities, uh, Hollywood celebrities, that maybe even gave some uh, some talks to uh, some of the passengers. Mm -hmm. um, it had a nice uh, setup. You had uh, uh, the ability to show uh, cinema projection, slide projection. Uh, had a, a, a microphone uh, amplifi am amplifier system with speakers, so you could, you could speak through a microphone and be, and be heard through the whole room very well. Um, let's see some other. Uh, oh, if you notice that the, the chairs are stackable, yeah. um, you could seat a total of thirty-seven people in there. I, that room would have been pretty packed, but yeah, thirty-seven people total. Um, uh, but again, this only lasted for three years, 36 to 39. Uh, and uh, during the war, uh, the room uh, was originally used as a briefing room. Um, I believe it in, uh, again, like with the observation bar, um, when space was needed for bunk space, this became more bunk space. Um, after the war, that is, uh, it probably changed its actual use, uh, as far as the actual, uh, room itself, but it was no longer a passenger, uh, amenity room. It was, uh, offices for some of the store vendors, um, maybe for like Austin Reed or, uh, you know, whoever might have been, uh, rendering some of the, uh, the shops on board at the time. Uh, I've also been told that Ocean Photography, uh, who handled all the uh, onboard photographing of passengers on board, uh, used the space for displaying uh, photographs of passengers uh, during the voyage itself. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it became an, an unused section of the ship through its post-war years, all the way through Long Beach. And uh, it was a t-shirt shop through most of the time that I had been involved in being on board. Um, it was known as T-shirt territory for the longest time. Mm -hmm. You can kind of uh, say, it, folks, they, well, they added a drop ceiling. But right. if, you, if you notice how this wall, there's a wall here. It juts back a little bit. There's a wall there. And then there's a back wall that you can see yeah. in this image. It does the same thing. Correct. And then this is a look into the doorway of the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, that is what happened to the lecture room, folks. Uh, yeah, I mean, there really isn't much else to, uh, to talk about. It, it, it was a few other things, uh, other types of stores in the very beginning uh, in the 70s. I think even in the rather era, I remember it being a, a t-shirt shop. Um, and then it, then they, when, when, uh, the operators or the leaseholders decided to go, uh, with, uh, completely, uh, con to take over complete control of all of the shops on board and kick out the tenants that ran shops on board. Um, this, this store, wasn't used for anything for quite a while. It was it was empty. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know what it was? Uh, 
before COVID closing? Before COVID, I think... I think it was um oh they they had it was like a like a portrait shop of some kind like they sold like pictures and you could like there was like a little studio so you could like take your picture and get it inserted in like a queen mary like portrait thing and okay all right yeah, it was i remember looking and it wasn't even open when i was there i looked at the doors were all locked up and stuff so i was like no, yeah, not, the last nothing. I, nothing was open that day I was there. The last time I was on board was was in was in March of 2020. Literally, like maybe two weeks before the ship closed to the public, and uh, uh, and it was in the evening, so nothing was open, and I don't think I was paying attention to what was what was there. Uh, I went to the observation bar, but I, you know, didn't look in the store, so I couldn't remember what was there during those last uh, days. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. I think we can we can move on to the library. Okie dokie. Um, the library is right beyond the lecture room, so you can see we started with the music studio, went to the children's playroom, then the lecture room. Now we're on to the library. Again, this is all first class folks. So let me see. Let's pull up a picture of the library. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's a beautiful, yeah. Oh yeah, beautiful room on the ship. Let me. There's a. This kind of shows the layout of the library as it was. So you can see tables and things, and then there's the, the the cabinets with the books in them. But yeah, so this was the library as it existed back then. So it's it's a rather large room lengthways. It's 44 feet long. It's 20 feet wide. It's a little bit wider. As you step uh, aft into that uh, corridor, it, it kind of zigzags over into the more of the center of the of the ship. And uh, the interesting thing about it was that they were very concerned about acoustics in the room. So the wall panels are pigskin covered, which is the same type of material that you see in the main hall today. So you had pigskin covering on the on the walls. And then at the very end bulkheads, uh, fore and aft, was was leather, a uh, padded leather, uh, surrounded with an oak border. Oh. Um, so the room had had a very muffled sound. So if you were carrying on a conversation, you know, it was probably, you know, typical like library rules. Um, you know, you you didn't really talk loud. Um, Believe it or not, I, I, and I can't believe this myself, 1,700 books. Jeez. That's a lot of books. And and all of the bookshelves are within these little alcoves. Um, they're on the on the, uh, the inner uh, bulkhead of the room, which would be going to starboard. The, uh, the, the little areas that you see there on the left, on, on the actual port side of the room there, um, those are trunk cases. Those are ventilated trunks that are going up in through the room. Um, but uh, let's see the uh, the room the the uh, bookcases had uh, glass shelves so that uh, or glass uh, doors so that the uh, you know as the ship was you know had a tendency to sometimes roll or or if you had any kind of a pitching motion the books couldn't fall out of the out of the bookshelves themselves. And then you can see there, um, on the table, which that it's a beautiful, beautiful table. I would assume that it's probably, it's probably done also in oak, maple, burr. Um, let's see, what was he? Uh, yeah, oak, uh, oak and maple burr. I think were the uh, uh, the two uh, woods that were used mainly on the uh, on this table. That table still exists today on the sun deck. Uh, executive offices on board it's in their conference room hmm. um but the table was for um for periodicals and magazines um probably the latest uh edition newspapers that's before they would either leave southampton or new york uh or or uh Cherbourg. um and they would offer the most popular titles of, of uh, periodicals from both sides of the Atlantic. So you, you know, you probably had Time, Look, uh, Collier's. Uh, uh, what, would, what would be another one? I can't think of one from the UK. Um, 
maybe somebody maybe somebody in the group knows a, a good periodical from that time period from the UK. I'm think there is one. Well, there is one called the Times. So we have New York Times, but they have the Times. They have the t- yeah, right. Um, oh, they have the the Mirror. And they have a, the Mirror, and uh, those are as far as newspapers. I was trying to think of magazines that were UK printed, but That's true. but you know, nonetheless, um, again, the the rest of the furniture, uh, you know, a lot of this all went you know during the conversion period. I do not know of any other library furniture existing on board. Mm-hmm. And you can actually you can see the pigskin. That's really really sticks out there. You can see the pigskin, the texture on the wall of the pigskin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. This looks like it was taken just after the ship arrived in in Long Beach. Yeah, when the when most of the power was off. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's on minimal emergency lighting. Uh, I don't think there's really much else. Um, oh, well, today, I mean, the room oh, still yes. has the original bookshelves. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Although the, the shelves aren't in there, and I believe the the interior setup for the shelving is not original. The actual casings of the alcoves are all still in the original wood paneling. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm not really thrilled with the look of the, oh, and the room has been expanded, by the way. The, yes. the inner bulkhead has been cut away and the room is now in a T shape and it, it comes out onto what was the original enclosed promenade on the port side. Uh... Wow. I'm just now realizing that that's an original uh, vanity, or actually maybe even a wood, uh, a bench for a piano, and an original, at least an original table leg. I don't know if that's an original table top, but that's an original table leg in that photograph there. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, that's a uh, long gallery uh, leg, for sure. Long gallery leg. I don't think the table is original. But yeah, I think that's a piano bench. It does look like it or mm-hmm. or even a, or even like you were saying maybe a vanity bench or something. Yeah, I mean I could think vanity vanity but you know usually vanities are are cushioned and and upholstered on the top. You don't usually see a vanity that's just plain wood like that. Yeah. Uh, in my video, I walk along the edge of the library, so that's why I'm kind of... Oh, sure. And so, uh, I don't know if it's easy to tell, but I think the original bulkhead of the library would have been, like, right here and then followed along that way. So they really yeah. like, pushed it out into the promenade area. Yeah, yeah, they did. And, and I, you know, I originally had said T-shaped, but it, it actually is more like, like H-shaped. So you've got the original layout of the room of the library and then you've got a little bit of a core uh wall section and then you have an expanded area of what was the yeah exactly just remove those lines above shop there yeah and that would be yeah it's between those true two trunk cases yeah yeah sure enough and now you, you were asking me before we came on about uh modifying the starboard side promenade deck back to original yeah and and, okay so and and just to tap into what i had said i think that it's it's too much of prime real estate for a restaurant space i think that you need to offer um the view to guests staying you know and dining on board so i'm okay with with keeping the starboard restaurants however that expansion onto the port side prom deck Mm-hmm. In those shops, that shop and the and the the old Shell Castle store, yeah, th- those need to go. Yeah, that needs to be returned back to its original appearance. Yeah, I agree because it really makes the the promenade deck feel kind of like confined and squeezed in. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> it absolutely does. All right. 
Okie so, doke. What should there would be? Drawing room next. Yeah, drawing room yes. next. So drawing room is right across the the way from the from the library. So there's that. Let me get a picture of the drawing room. Uh, we'll start with this one. So this All is right. this is looking forward of the ship. Um, right. And then I have one looking aft. Yes. So don't mind the may do burr. <laughs> oh, good. I don't have to mention the type of wood on there anymore. <laughs> Everybody keep in mind, that's may do burr on the uh, backs of, and the uh, border of the table. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I would assume it's probably the entire table and the chairs. Mm -hmm. It yeah, looks like it's all the same. Yeah, yeah, even the leg of the table. And this would be the only wood paneling that you would see, other than other than the um, the bureau there on the right, the, the mm -hmm. dresser bureau. Um, uh, the room was a painted room, uh, in 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 cream colored decor, um, and the uh, the curtains were you know, kind of like a gold with the blue green shade. Uh, I believe it's either birds or flowers in the design. On the curtains, yeah, um, and the the curtains, uh, we actually still have the curtains on board, and as far as I know, uh, although they may have been replaced, um, they are they at least resemble the original 1936 curtains, and uh, this room actually uh, remained pretty much as it was, although I think a lot, some of the furniture had been removed uh, during wartime. Even this was. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, used for like the most, you know, the the highest ranking commanding officers that would be traveling on board. This would include Colonel Warden. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with who Colonel Warden was? Yes, Sir Winston Churchill. Sir Winston Churchill. That was his uh, code name uh, for security purposes when he traveled on board. He traveled on board the Queen Mary three times during the war, and uh, uh, three times post well um but uh during the war this was his his personal ward room uh he would meet with other officers and and uh smoke cigars and all that inside this room and that's where that <clears throat> that famous photograph of him uh sitting right there by that fireplace uh on the opposite end there uh i don't have the, that photograph uh, unfortunately <laughs> oh no <laughs> Well, I'm sure that some people here have seen that picture. That painting yeah. uh, is still there today. Uh, it's a flower market garden scene, and it's probably one of my most favorite pieces of art uh, on the ship. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you want to tell them about the genius of this uh, forward oh. panel? Yeah. So that is a collapsible panel. It folds up into, you know, in an accordion way, to expose the, well, I guess you could say the pulpit of uh, uh, the area where a uh, Catholic priest would hold Roman uh, Roman Catholic services on. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess they felt that there weren't a lot of Roman Catholics that were traveling on board the ship because <laughs> the drawing room is not that very big of a room. Mm -hmm. I guess they figured that they were all uh, Anglican church uh, going passengers. Uh, but uh, that accordion panel also exists on board today still, luckily. Mm -hmm. But um, the, uh, the painting of, of uh, Mary and... and uh... And Jesus, the, this been... is the this is the Madonna of the Atlantic, Madonna of the North Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, is it? Now I'm I'm going to have to cheat here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is Madonna Madonna of the Atlantic. It's not North Atlantic. Oh yeah, Kenneth Shoesmith. Okay. Kenneth Shoesmith. There were two Madonna paintings. Um, the uh, second class area had also a uh, an area where Roman Catholic uh, services were held. And that mural is the Madonna of Tall Ships. I have that. 
There it is. Now, I believe it's the Madonna of tall ships that uh, we do not have on board anymore. Hmm. Which is really unfortunate. But the uh, Madonna of the Atlantic, I, I know it's been it's been moved about on uh, uh, throughout the ship's Long Beach years for different art you know art displays, um, but it you know it hasn't been its in its original location since the ship arrived in Long Beach in '67. Um, it's in still pretty good shape, I would say. Look, uh, last time I had seen it, it was it's been fairly well looked after. Uh, I would certainly like to see the drawing room uh, turned back into its original appearance uh, with the uh, um, with the accordion uh, uh, division panel put back and and then uh, Madonna of the Atlantic put back and you could just basically fold the the panels so that you know to one side you could see the, the artwork and then um, uh, but you could also see Madonna of the Atlantic you know beyond it Mm-hmm. Now to show people what this area looks like today. Well, this yeah. is probably the '80s, but still, it looks pretty much like this today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Yeah, this was the Queen Mary store, with uh, which uh, uh, Martha Chacon and her husband owned and operated for. Years, years. Um, she was originally a Disney uh, uh, hiree that came on board. Oh, she actually, you know, she and me have been late rather. Um, late rather. Uh, she worked uh, for the uh, uh, for the gift stores on board during the, that time during Disney era, and when. Rather took over in '93. She came on to work for Rather and uh, uh, handled the early days of, of Rather. I mean, I'm not Rather. I mean, of RMS. I'm sorry, of RMS uh, operating the stores. And then it was uh, it was pitched to uh, it was pitched to uh, Prevatil that uh, you know rather than RMS handling the managing and staffing of the stores that uh, that she could operate the stores. And so she became a tenant. And operated both the, the Queen Mary store here in the in the old drawing room, as well as the uh, the port side necessity store uh, on A deck at the hotel lobby that sold uh, you know magazines and books and and aspirin and cigarettes and and, and anything else you really needed. Um, and they ran that all the way until I think it was what about 2010 when the uh, leaseholders decided to change their whole aspect and boot all of the uh, the tenants and went back to operating their own gift stores. So, yeah. Well, uh, we should now move on to the general main hall area. Okay. So, I would have us kind of we should barely we should only touch upon the center shop because we we are running out of time. Um, but and we have still some well, yeah. Let's save. Let's save main hall and the. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, the writing rooms uh, on our next. Uh, uh, well, actually, let's touch the shops. Let's just do the shops really quick. Um. Okay. So the, the center one. The center. Uh, was for the longest time occupied by Austin Reed Men's Clothing Store. Uh, if you needed, uh, if you needed a tie, if you needed, uh, I think you could actually even get a. Uh, a, uh, a suit uh, or even a tuxedo uh, it was probably fitted for you by the tailors on board um, if, if it was necessary if you didn't bring one for whatever reason uh, the uh, the store itself though was rather small inside so mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was going to also touch base on is that see if you look to the left and you look to the right you have these display cases and so I would say about 90%, well, maybe 80% of all the shopping on board was all handled through display cases. It, it wasn't like actual stores that you could walk inside and browse through, you know, the inventory on, on shelves. Mm -hmm. um, 
you you browse by looking in these display cases. And I guess there was a shop steward um, <clears throat> that would basically, you know, if you pointed to an item and told them that you'd like to purchase this, um, it was it was handled for you. It was uh, you were you were billed basically, I guess, to your cabin, and uh, and it was brought to your room uh, during the voyage. Uh, it wasn't an actual like store that you you could walk into. Although the Austin Reed store um, uh, did have a little bit of an inside, but if I also remember, you really didn't need to unless you were being fitted. Um, oh, they had shirts too. So those those racks there had uh, you know special uh, uh, quality you know dress shirts that were available. But it, mainly ties, mainly ties. Sold a lot of ties. They even had a special design uh, specifically for the Queen Mary, referred to as the Queen Mary tie. And it had like a, a purple band, red band, a cream band. Um, and it was ex sold exclusively on board the Queen Mary. You couldn't buy it anywhere else. Um, and those were color bands, uh, angled colored bands on like a royal blue background tie. Yeah, that might actually be one on display there. Like that one, or yeah, 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 that one. Although the the ones that I've seen, the stripes weren't that close together, so that might not be a Queen Mary tie. But <coughs> excuse me, I've had this cough me that on it. It's driving me nuts. Um, the uh, plaster freeze above the Austin Reed store. That's um, uh, speed and progress. That's in if you were to stretch it out in length, it's fifty feet in length, uh, and that is also by uh, that is also by uh, uh, Kenneth Hughesmith, I believe. The uh, uh, the two outer stores. Um, oh, and I should I should touch base really quick. The the stores were all closed up during the war. Um, again, used for uh, officer workroom workspaces, office space. Um, this was the Austin Reed store on the inside during the war. Oh yeah, sure enough. Yeah, they were. Yeah, uh, you know, there were reporting stations when you were on board uh, for whatever unit you were you were uh, with when when you were traveling on on the ship. And so your commanding officers would have areas set up where you would report uh, to them. And so a lot of those areas on prom deck were, were set up for, that, for those purposes, including the Austin Reed store. And the Austin Reed store after the war, um, I believe they came back after, uh, after it was converted back to peacetime use. But Austin Reed didn't continue their... Uh, their services on board, and it became another store, and I can't remember what the name of the of the store was. And I believe it was also offering uh, men's clothing. Um, the uh, store over to the right, you can, you can kind of zoom in over there. This one? Yeah. Okay. Is the W.H. Uh, Smith & Son bookstore. Oh, that'll work too. Um, <laughs> if you've traveled uh, at all uh, recently, gone through an airport, um, in the U.S. and and, and in the U.K., W.H. Uh, Smith is uh, uh, today a like a periodical store. You can buy magazines and and various uh, uh, items, including snacks and stuff, in there. But uh, it's mainly handles like periodicals, newspapers, that type of thing. Uh, and that's exactly what the W.H. Smith and Son bookstore was uh, on the Queen Mary. Uh, again, this only lasted for the first three years after the war. Uh, it became um, uh, it was a clothing store. I think they sold uh, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. There was something specific about the, the clothing, but it it, uh, it did become a clothing store. The original pre maiden voyage drawings show this as a flower shop. <clears throat> um, and it's interesting that it's identical to the store on the port side. This is the starboard side looking forward. Um, pretty much identical in the layout, but totally different types of wood. Totally different types of wood. 
Um, now you're going to ask me probably what kind of wood, and I don't remember. <laughs> I do not remember what the paneling is. Um, um, but they both still boast the uh, their wood paneling today, which yeah. is very nice. And the left store, the the, the courtside store, uh, was uh, a uh, line owned, uh, you know, Cunard owned uh, store that sold cigar, cigarettes, um, uh, and I believe that's that's what it has remained throughout the uh, its uh, peacetime service. Yeah, we better save the main hall for the main hall itself for next for next time, I, I guess. Yeah, we ran out of time just talking about all the, all the stuff. I thought we were, I thought we were gonna make it through. Yeah, me and... too. I think we spent the first forty minutes on the observation bar alone. We did. Yeah, we did. Well, that's a beautiful room, and it deserved the attention it got. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about the. The pre-war and the post-war changes to the main hall. Yes. All right, folks. Uh, I will end the live stream here. So, um, and then next time we'll talk about you know the the rest of the main hall because there's still some more stuff. There's still some some writing rooms and things like that. And as as he was saying, the uh, the changes between the pre-war and the post-war version of the of the main halls. So there's still a lot of stuff to go through. Um, uh, before we go, I want to just say I had the name wrong. It's Maurice. It's Maurice Lambert, not Lambert. Lambert. Maurice Lambert that did the uh, plaster freeze along the uh, above the uh, Austin Reed store. Oh, okay. I don't want to get the artist mixed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, folks. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this one. I saw we had you know somewhere around like sixty, sixty-five viewers at one point through uh through the the live stream so that's pretty cool um so yeah we'll catch you all next time thank you so much steve for joining thank you goodbye